that's that's all I that's all I have to say. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 24 BMW X6M competition. We are going to take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. The X6 gets a facelift for 24, and visual updates include this X-shaped blacked out panel beneath the now blacked out grill. There are narrower projector LED headlights with these directional LED DRLs. Beneath is a re-sculpted corner inlet. This one is painted in wildberry metallic, and though it is a gray day, it's still very much purple, and not a color I think suits this vehicle all that well. I know this is coming from a guy who just chose plum crazy purple for his Demon 170, but it just doesn't work for this one. At the side is a set of 20 inch front, 21 inch rear alloy wheels wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, 295 section front and 315 at the rear. Within those wheels are M compound brakes, ventilated discs, and optional red painted calipers. The blacked out theme continues with a side garnish, lower sills, door mirrors, and window trim. The silhouette is unchanged, and I still don't understand the stylistic appeal of this fastback roofline compared to the more traditional X5. Also, why does it look like there's so much wheel gap? It's not on air springs. At the back is a mild black lip spoiler to complement the subtle roof mounted one. You get slightly reworked LED taillights and turn signals above a black gloss diffuser and four now blacked out exhaust ports. There's just so much chunk to the rear end, isn't there? And I don't think the updates for 24 really make this generation X6 look any better. And that leads to my question for you, which is which generation X6 looks the best. If it's me, there's only one I've ever thought was cool and still think is cool, and that's the first gen. Let me know in the comments, and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this two-tone ivory white and atlas gray full merino leather interior with diamond stitching on the seat centers, seat perforations, rear seat heating as an option with the executive package. On the doors, we get sunshades, leather up top, and down low in the panel, more of that diamond stitching insert there. And speaking of diamond, there is an optional Bowers & Wilkins diamond surround sound system, some carbon fiber trim, an M tread plate to step over. And as I do, I'm gonna duck my head and you'll wanna do the same if you're taller. Beyond my own seats at six feet tall, I've got a decent portion of knee room. The seat back is all in leather. There is a USB-C port on the back of each seat. The foot pockets are adequate. Thigh support is lacking though. Headroom is really impressive for a fastback. Head clears the roof, and though the seats do not recline, I'm still gonna give it a thumbs up. And I've got a suede wrapped headliner here with a panoramic sunroof and little LEDs that illuminate at night. In the middle are air vents. You get a four zone climate control system and a DC outlet down low. The drive shaft dump is also not that large, so you can make it over it easily, though now my head is pressed against the roof. So maybe a smaller middle passenger with two full-size riders on either side. If you don't have that middle passenger, then an armrest comes down with deploying cup holders and a little bit of storage in the console. Let's check out the front next. No need to slam the doors closed because the executive package gives us the soft close function, but just to listen for build quality's sake, very solid. No smart keyless entry for the rear doors, only for the fronts. The front seats have illuminating X6M logos, big winglets for your shoulders, power adjusting side bolsters. They're heated as standard, ventilated, and massaging with that executive package. You get aluminum accented foot pedals, more X6M, now competition tread plates. The front doors add power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. Two positions of memory for the driver's seat. Hit this button to release your hatch and gain access to 27 cubic feet of space, not as much obviously as the X5. If we needed more room to fold down the seats, you either have to have really long arms to reach those tabs or go to the sides, open up the rear doors, then fold the seats down 40, 20, 40. It is really a shame they didn't just add some tabs to fold down the seats from back here. They did squeeze in a donut underneath the floor. There's a power close and lock feature on that lid. 
and taking a peek at this thick leather wrap steering wheel, which is not overly large in diameter. I like that. It feels great in the hands. Tricolor stitching on the inside. It's heated. It's got power adjustments. Behind, we've got these carbon fiber face paddles, nice and large with texturing on the back. Customizable M1 and M2 buttons, leather wrapping on the airbag, and then beyond, we've got new for 24, this curved display encompassing a reconfigurable digital gauge cluster and a 14.9 inch touchscreen that is sharp, it's visually compelling, and it's responsive with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Around the screen is gloss carbon fiber. There's an illuminating M logo on the passenger side, stitched leather up on the dashboard, a head up display, physical volume knob down here with seek buttons, and then defroster buttons. Those are your only physical HVAC controls. Everything else is in the infotainment system, which can be a little distracting to use while driving. Slide forward on the carbon fiber to find two cup holders that are heated and cooled with that executive package, plus a DC outlet, USB-A port, and wireless charging pad. Lots more of that gloss carbon fiber trim, which I much prefer to more of this gloss black. We've got a dial to control the infotainment system if you don't want to touch the screen, stitched leather for your gear selector, drive mode buttons here under the leather topped console is a little bit of storage with a USB-C port. Visibility is fine up until you get to that D-pillar. It is a blind spot. Thankfully, there's standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. This cabin is a great mix of swankiness and sportiness with premium materials, space for passengers in both rows, and great technology. Now we got to see about the drive. All right, let's fire it up. Well, that is sufficiently thunderous of a startup. That is with the baffles and the exhaust open, and here's what that sounds like outside. Now, if I were to close those up, it settles down a little bit, but yeah, if you fire this thing up in the early morning hours in your neighborhood, you might upset a few people. Hey, cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this drive in the 24 BMW X6M competition. We have a lot of drive selections to choose from here, so let's just dive right in. You hit the setup button, we have all these different configurations for your engine, chassis, steering, braking, and your all-wheel drive system. We'll leave it all over here on this side, the efficient or comfort side of things. And then you've got your M mode settings, road, sport, and track. This mostly pertaining to your safety systems, your traction control system there, and then as I just showed you, your exhaust. So let's move it into reverse and we'll use the backup assist, which will take you along the same path you use to get into the space. And when you're finished, away you shall go. We'll begin as we do with the world famous horn test. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's a solid, solid horn. Now for the turn signal sound, what do we have here? It's a premium tone, quite like it. The powertrain in the X6M competition 424. This is an LCI X6 or life cycle impulse, not an update, an impulse. And with that, we have a retooled 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 paired now with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. The combined output is the same as the 23 X6M competition. It is 617 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque. That is routed through an eight speed torque converter automatic sourced by ZF and sent to all four tires permanently. Unlike the M3 or M5, you can't lock out the front axle and have it be rear wheel drive, though that would be amazing. And BMW, you need to do that right away. But you can still have a rear bias to this all wheel drive system. Notably, there is no X6M standard now that makes 600 horsepower. There's just the competition. So they're all making 617 and it's quite a lot of power. And even in efficient mode, the throttle is 
fairly sensitive. Like you quickly will get up to speed and if you're not careful, you might have a, a jolt to the forward momentum that you weren't expecting. But when you're in motion, my goodness, this is such a smooth transmission. And the seats are phenomenally comfortable. Lots of adjustability, including those side bolsters and the thigh extension. You will find a comfortable driving position for yourself. Now let's see about the turning radius. So I'm gonna crank the wheel. And find it to be very, very good for an all wheel drive vehicle without rear wheel steering. That's extra impressive. Now it's a little bizarre that you can get rear wheel steering in the X5 and X6 M60i, but not in the full on M or M competition versions. But you know what? That's a very good turn, so I'm all right with it. Now getting into the ride quality with these adaptive dampers and steel springs, it is on the firm and busy side of things. Now, some of that is owed to the low profile tires and big wheels, but certainly not all of it. Not that doesn't account for how much this chassis moves around over undulating surfaces or just quite how much impact you get when you go over bumps and ruts and cracks. It feels excited it feels jittery in a somewhat tedious way now we need to see how quick the x6m competition gets to 60. for that real world demonstration i've got my race box set up here to record and to prepare for launch control i'd need to move the engine into sport plus i need to turn off traction and stability control and put it in manual mode or i can just have all that programmed into one of my m buttons as I've done here, so that's all ready to go. Then to use launch, you hold your foot on the brake while pinning the throttle, build up the revs, and let go of the brake. Launch control is active. Whoa! There's 60 in 3.87 seconds. Take my breath away. And that, I will add, was a proper real world test. We've got water falling from the sky, dampening the road surface, and we were on a slight uphill to start things off. That's why BMW says the X6M competition will get to 60 a tenth of a second quicker than that, and independent tests have seen 3.2 seconds to 60. Just unreal. Now let's get the good times rolling. I'm just gonna drop my foot here in seventh gear. Shifts down quickly to third. Oh my gosh! Vicious acceleration! Ooh, and that twin turbo V8, which I know the sound's enhanced inside the cabin through the speakers, but I mean, it still sounds good. Oh. Oh, good heavens. This, this, this is a Titan on the road. You know, I think I'd like to run that back one more time. Wow, that's that's all I that's all I have to say. Holy cow! Absolutely brutal acceleration. Mid-range, out of a hole, I do not care. This is one of the fastest things on the road. And in manual mode. Shifts are nice and quick. Ooh, I like the shift light indicators on the dash. And even with a little bit of water coming down, the all wheel drive system just gives you this confidence. It's got so much stability and grip. It's satisfying to operate these paddles as well. Let you go all the way out to red line. Now, while acknowledging these imperfect conditions of water actively falling from the sky and us now on a downhill, I am going to carry some speed into this curve, go full ABS with the braking, and huck it in to see how it responds. Here we go. Hard on those brakes. Great action. Nice stop and quick turn in. 
so stable through the corner, flat, controllable, and a missile out of the curve. Okay, it's really coming down now, but we're gonna see what this all-wheel drive system and rear limited slip differential can really handle. So here, checking it in, pushes the nose, play with the throttle to bring it back. Back in wants to come, but you can play with it. And manage the chaos. Woo! Yes! Apart from the very initial pushing of the nose in that first corner, which I could then pretty easily pull back in, to then feeling the rear bias of the all-wheel drive system in that second corner, rotating that back end around, letting it dance, letting it play, like no 5,300-pound SUV really should, and yet does. And this steering communicates what's happening, the limits of the grip, the limited slip differential in the back, doing its absolute best to get that power to the ground in what were very slick conditions. Hugely, hugely impressive stuff. Now, with all that tall foolery behind us, since we are on the highway, I'm going to take it out of the M mode and put the exhaust in quiet mode and listen for the NVH level at these speeds. This is clearly the environment of casual driving for which the X6M competition was designed. Built for German Autobahns, smooth strips of tarmac, high speeds, you will be much more relaxed. The ride settles in, there's not a lot of road noise, tire noise, wind noise. So I think if your commute is primarily highway miles, then the somewhat brittle, brittle ride that I experienced around town in this vehicle wouldn't be quite so noticeable or bothersome. And though this model doesn't have it equipped, it is available with some driving aids like steering assistance and adaptive cruise control and a lane change feature. So if you do have a lot of highway miles on your docket, those features can benefit you. And that leads me to my miles per hour word of the day, which for this 24X6M comp is frenzied, meaning showing intense excitement. That's how this vehicle feels in every context except when you're cruising on the highway. It's just so excitable and that ride is jittery and the throttle is touchy and sensitive. It just, it is ready to go, rearing to go at all times. and. You need to understand that if you're shopping something like this. Before we talk pricing and competition for the X6M Comp, let's review the top speed and fuel economy. Top speed with the M driver's package is 177 miles per hour. Without it, it's 155 limited. The fuel economy is 13 MPG in the city, 18 on the highway, and 15 combined. I've seen 13.9 with not all of those miles driven with the aggression that we just saw a few minutes ago. Pricing for the 24X6M competition life cycle impulse. Start at $128,000. This one is tested is 146 grand. Competitors in this coupe, coupe-ish performance luxury segment include the Audi RS Q8 that starts at $124,000. It makes 591 horsepower, gets to 60 in 3.3 seconds, has a top speed of 190 miles per hour and fuel economy of 16 combined. Then there's the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT I just drove recently. That one starts at 198,000 bucks. It makes 650 horsepower, gets to 60 in 3.1 seconds, has a top speed of 189 miles per hour and fuel economy of 16 combined. And finally, the Lamborghini Urus S is the trim that I would compare to this one. It starts at $236,000. It makes 657 horsepower, gets to 60 in 3.1 seconds, has a top speed of 190 miles per hour, and fuel economy of just 13 combined. Now, interesting is that all of those three vehicles are all under the same Volkswagen Auto, Auto Group brand, and they all use the same powertrain, just tweaked in different ways. The 24X6M Comp is a vehicle of numerous highs and 
a few lows. Highs include doing this right now, driving on the highway, ripping through corners as we did before, enjoying this interior, or matching the price against the other very expensive vehicles that I already mentioned. The lows though, like the harsher ride around town and having to look at this every single day, are what would have me personally choose something else. Either I would go for the less expensive option, the Audi RS Q8, which looks fantastic on the outside, has a very contemporary interior, and is great to drive as well, or I would spend the extra money on the best driving SUV on the market, that Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. Which would you guys choose though? Would you have the Cayenne Turbo GT? Would you get the Lamborghini Urus S? Would you have the Audi RS Q8? Or would you get this X6M Competition? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I will see you again next time.